In this knife talk video, I'm going to be talking about this knife. This is the Great Eastern Cutlery Tidiute number 82 Possum Skinner in Natural Canvas Micarta. Um, so this is the uh, second version or second um, knife run on the 82 frame that Great Eastern Cutlery is doing um, in 2018 and into 2019. Um, and it's a really cool knife. So previously in 2014, Great Eastern Cutlery came out with the 82 frame. It's uh, this serpentine frame here. So you can see it has kind of an S curve to it. It's a rounded bolster equal end serpentine frame. And uh, originally they came out with the uh, Dixie stock knife. Um, and uh, that was the only knife that they ran on this frame in 2014. And then in 2018, they did another run at the end of 2018. Uh, they did another run of the Stockman version. As you can see here, I'll compare this knife, which I've already done videos on. You can check those out if you haven't seen them uh, with this version. And this is a new um, pattern or a new blade combination for this frame. It's the Possum Skinner. So um, to talk about what to compare it here, you can see that this knife, the Stockman, like most Stockman knives, is a two spring knife with three blades. The Possum Skinner is a single spring knife with two blades. Um, so this is a pen style multi-blade knife. Uh, what that means is that um, unlike a jack style multi-blade knife where uh, both blades come from the same end, so if both blades came out of this end, for example, that's like a jack, um, and uh, you can have multi-bladed jacks. But there's uh, the, the blades come out of opposite ends here, so um, that's what you call a pen style um, multi-blade knife. And uh, they called this the Possum Skinner. Um, kind of a funny name. Uh, there's a lot of possums in Pennsylvania, here where I am, and especially up where Gradish Cutlery is and where I grew up. So it's kind of a funny name uh, for them to have chosen for this knife. Uh, one thing, you never know when you buy a Gradish Cutlery knife if um, you're gonna get the tube that some people get in, or I'm sorry, not the tube, the, uh, everybody gets a tube, that's how the knife comes packaged. But if you're going to get the pin um, that they've been doing for the last few years, uh, the Possum Skinner pin looked pretty uh, funny, kind of an interesting pin. I don't collect the pins like some people do in the sense that I really want to have the pin for each knife that I buy, but um, I, was, I didn't get one on this uh, with this knife, and it's not a huge deal to me, but I wish I could show it off uh, in the video for those of you who are interested in that. But anyway, to get to the knife, like I said, it's a two blade single spring knife. So it's really thin, as you can see. And uh, this is the canvas micarta, it's the titty Ute version. Um, so it's, you know, it was an inexpensive knife. I think that the, the promotion, the sale that he was doing is over, but I got this for an even better price um, from Gunstock Jack, Barry of, of Gunstock Jack knives and um i think that he still has these they actually did a lot of um you know high production numbers uh at least of the stockman variants um they actually just gradation cutlery just released their 2018 production totals and they did a good number of them and that's you know you can see that in the fact that even those uh stag stockmans are still available on dealers uh sites and these are also available. So if you're interested in one, um, you'll see that I recommend it pretty highly, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice knife. So I just got this. I haven't used it yet, but I am actually gonna test the edge um, here on the video. But I was really impressed by this knife. So to finally get to the blades, um, the main blade is a Turkish clip point or a slender clip point. And this main blade is, you can see cranked, slightly so that it fits a little better into the frame here uh, with both blades. And it is the same, oops, Turkish clip point uh, as on the Stockman version. So you can see that the only difference between these two blades is that this is the Northfield version and this is the Tidiou version. So they're the same blade. And then the secondary blade is also 
the same as one of the blades on the Stockman. The secondary blade is a Warncliffe. Now some people um, really like a, a thicker uh, clip point and then a sheet foot. I think this is about the ideal user knife um, blade shape combination for me. Uh, I really like this little Warncliffe, and this actually seems to be ground even thinner than on the Stockman version. So to show that again, on the Stockman version, the Warncliffe is actually on the same side as the Turkish clip point, and, you know, same blade. Again, the only difference is that the nail nick's on the opposite side because um, of the configuration, but uh, same blade, and it does look to me ever so slightly like the the Warncliffe on the Possum Skinner is ground a little bit thinner, especially towards the tip. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it, it oh yeah, I think that you will be able to see it there. Um, it's a thinner ground knife. And um, someone had said something on Blade Forums about getting this knife and thinking that it, the blades were too thin. Uh, that's one of the reasons it looked like that in pictures that I saw of this that made me want to get this. Uh, a thin blade cuts better. And when I use a traditional knife, a slip joint, I'm not using it for hard use. Uh, I'm gonna be using it for slicing and, and things that I don't need a super, super, um, you know, robust or overbuilt blade. I usually carry a modern knife, which usually have thicker blades than traditional knives, so I can use that if I need to. But I really like that these blades are thinly ground, and I really like the blade shapes themselves. I find that this uh, Turkish clip point is really great for um, food prep, for general cutting, um, and just a really great all-around blade. And then I find this Warncliffe, um, and I had an older version of the Stockman that I used a lot from the 2014 run. I find this Warncliffe really great for pulling cuts, um, cutting paper, uh, cutting cardboard, opening boxes, just a really useful blade. Um, so I really like these blade shapes, and I really appreciate how thin this knife is. So being a single spring knife, it's really thin. Uh, comparing it to the Stockman, and this Stockman is stag, so it's a little thicker than, say, the um, Tidiute versions, which have uh, the mic micarta and then the Northfield version with bone. This is going to be a little bit thicker, but if, even if you just look at the springs, you can see that it's, you know, double the width. And... Um, that is also the case because there is an additional um, spacer there. So that adds to the width also. So this is a really thin knife. It's going to be easy to carry. Some people find this to be a little bit big for carry. I don't at all. This is pretty much in my, um, you know, perfect range to where the blade is going to be, you know, pretty much what I need. It's going to be able to handle it and um, still, you know, easily carryable. So this is, an, you know, definitely not too big for me, but I think that this knife is gonna be really, really easy to carry um, because it's thin, because it has flat scales with the micarta, and uh, just the, the rounded bolsters also help with that. I feel like the serpentine frame also makes it easier to carry, but, you know, those are preference things. Um, <clears throat> getting to the, the handles, they had, uh, they did a, a version of this in elderberry jig bone. I really like elderberries themselves. Um, I, growing up, I would pick elderberries at my grandparents' house and I like to drink elderberry tea and things like that. I didn't love the jigging pattern on the elderberry bone. Um, some people might, it was just a little bit too uniform and crosshatch looking for me. Uh, but the color of the bone was nice. But I did go with this because um, I knew that if I was going to keep this knife, I would keep it as a user, and uh, this canvas micarta is nice for that. But this is actually good-looking canvas micarta. Um, sometimes natural canvas micarta, to me, um, especially if it doesn't have this kind of um, rounding to it, looks really plain and you know just kind of brown. <clears throat> I think this this looks good. It look it's more of a straw color to me, um, yellowish towards the edges, and uh, like I say, a nice straw color, and I think that it looks pretty good. Um, so I'm happy with that. Uh, this, the Titty Ute version, had, uh, or has satin um, bolsters uh, and shield. So to compare it here to the Northfield, you can see the Northfield is polished, whereas the Titty Ute is satin, and you can see those, you know, lines where they polished it with a little bit less uh, high grid of a wheel um, or polishing compound. 
Uh, that's fine for me. I think it's good for a user. Um, it, it's not something that I care too much about, and I think that it does fit the aesthetic of the plane um, micarta handles. Uh, it did come, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it did come right there with a little bit of scuffing, uh, and right there, you can see that kind of, and some, sometimes people comment on my fingernails being dirty. If my fingernails are dirty right now, it's because this knife came with a lot of gunk in the nail nicks. Um, so I tried to clean them out after opening them, but there's a lot of gunk in those nail nicks. So anyway, it did come with some, you know, scuffing on the bolster. So if that's a big deal to you, I would probably suggest going with the Northfield version because those high polished bolsters won't have that. Um, now, uh, as for the, the fit otherwise, it's really nice. I checked, there's really no transitions there. You can't really feel it with your fingernail, um, with the shield or any of the bolsters. Um, the pins are all nicely done. You can see that that fits in really well. Um, the shield is well fitted also. Um, I can really go either way on shields. Some people really, really like to have shields. Um, the only thing for me with shields is if it's gonna have if a knife is gonna have a shield I vastly prefer it to be pinned versus just glued like case knives are uh, Gradation cutlery pins their knives so or their shields. So that's nice um, for example on the stockman I Much prefer the stag without the shield I know some people when gradation cutlery announced that they weren't doing st shields on stag knives unless it was a special factory order um, anymore. Some people were upset with that. I vastly, vastly prefer it. I think it looks much, much more classic, much nicer without the shield. This shield is okay. Um, it's, this is what some people call the hot dog shield. I call it the name tag shield. It, it looks like a, like a brass name tag to me. Um, and I might get this engraved, uh, with my initials. I've done that on uh, at least one other knife. And I think it's a good thing to do if you want to <laughs> convince yourself to keep a knife, right? If you get your initials engraved on it, it's not going to be much uh, of a s easy sale. So I do that sometimes to convince myself to keep a knife because I do have the habit of um, getting a whim of selling a bunch of knives and sometimes selling ones that I don't necessarily want to. Um, but one thing that I think a lot of people are interested in with this knife because it is so thin is the blade rub. So... Uh, one thing, I've seen some people saying that their uh, Dixie Stockmans don't have blade rub, and I think that that's really, I mean, it's like, I'm not criticizing them, but I think it's because they haven't opened and closed them much. They haven't carried them or used them. Um, I've carried this knife uh, once. Um, I was waiting to get this knife. But uh, I've carried my other Dixie Stock knife a lot, and it definitely had blade rub. Its blades were not fitted quite as well as this one's are. This one's blades are fitted about as perfectly as you as can be. Um, you can see that the, you know, this blade, the main blade is is pretty close to the liner. The uh, worn clift is well cranked. It's in the center of that blade well, and then the drop point is also well cranked towards the other side. So you can't really expect more than that. And this knife still does have. A little bit of blade rub not too much you can see there's blade rub there and then if I open the uh, drop point you can see there's blade rub there now you know some people they get really meticulous they'll you know first they'll open this blade and then if they want to open the drop point they'll open this one and then they'll go like this and I just don't you know it's not it's not worth that to me I mean I don't really plan to sell this knife, but even if I did, like, that blade rub doesn't matter, you know. Um, <clears throat> it, it's one of those things where I'm just saying, I find it really difficult to believe that any of these 82 Dixie stock knives don't have blade rub. Um, because mine here, as you can see, is fitted really, really well, and it still has a little bit of blade rub. Um... <sighs> This knife does seem, I've only opened this, opened and closed a few times, I got it today, but like I said, but it does seem to have a little bit, um, interestingly, it's not too much, right there, I think you can see that probably on the video, a little tiny bit there, and then see if you can see it on the other blade, I can't see it on this blade, no, so, 
there's really not too much. This this is well fitted. Like I say, um, there is a little bit right there, as you can see, uh, but not too much. Um, I'm not even sure how that happens. But um, this knife came also just like the other uh, 82 from this run with um, no blade wrap, which I hate blade wrap. I've had GEC fix blade wrap on some of my knives. Uh, that's when uh, the if you allow the knife to close like that, which you should be able to. I know that sometimes, you know, even I think Bill of GEC has said, you know, just don't let it close, you know, full intensity. Um, and that's true, you know, on a knife that has blade wrap, you could hold it closed like that. But I think that you should be able to let a knife close. I mean, if it's a practical knife for using, um, you should be able to close it on your leg and things like that, um, which I often do. And uh, it's when you let that close and the blade, the, the edge, hits the back spring and makes a dent. And this doesn't have that. Uh, and then... This blade sits well within the frame, the, the Warncliffe. That's one of the nice things about Sheepfoot blades and Warncliffe blades, they sit well within the frame. This one came sitting really nicely within the frame. Both blades are easy to open. Um, this one, the nail nick sits relatively close. Um, you know, after years and years of use, you might have to put a little bit of an easy open notch there, but that's not a huge deal um, because it would take a lot of sharpening to make that happen. Easy to open, snaps open. You can see snaps closed, and I'll compare that to the, the stock knife version. Um, this one is, I think, just pinned kind of tightly up at the top. So it it's a little tight at the top. Um, it doesn't snap quite as much as the, the um, main blade, but it does snap closed just as much. So I think it's just a little bit tight up here at the top. Um, but really, really nice action on both blades, and that's especially true compared to this knife. This knife doesn't have bad action at all. Uh, it it just has lighter springs. So I would call this like a five and this maybe a six. Um, you can see that one snaps. This one snaps also. This I would call more of a four, whereas this six probably also. Um, you can see that this one does snap closed. Not quite as strong as the, the Possum Skinner. And then on here, the this is a four, uh, snaps closed also. But the spring um, tension is definitely, I think, a little stronger on the Possum Skinner. Um, so that's, that's nice, it's not too strong. Um, yeah, I think it's appropriate. Uh, you know, again, it's not like it's difficult to open or anything. Easy to open and close, snaps closed. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to compare this knife also uh, to another multi-blade pen style knife, the 35 Churchill. Almost forgot what this one was called. Um, this is in green banana bone. It pretty much just turned out like yellow. Um, <clears throat> but this is another knife that I like a lot because I do like these pen style knives. I think that they fit a lot of blade and a lot of useful blade into a small uh, package. And you can see that this 35 is a little bit shorter. Um, I think that this is about a four, four and a quarter and this is about three and three quarters, something like that. Um, this also has a clip point, but like I was talking about, a little bit more of a, a wide clip point. So um, I carried and used this knife yesterday. It seems like there's a little bit left on it um, from using it. Uh, but uh, very nice knife, um, and like I say, a little bit more of maybe the traditional clip point style. And um, you can see that this has blade rub. Actually, I dropped the kick on both of these blades um, so that they sit really, really low. But uh, it actually has blade rub from the liner right here. Uh, doesn't affect use at all, but just something. And then another thing, because this is, you know, see how those blades are ground so that they fit. Um, this sheep foot so again kind of more of the traditional blade setup uh like i said people some people prefer um this is also a really thinly ground blade so that's one of the things that i really like about these pen style knives is that they tend to have thinner ground blades and you can get a blade with belly and a blade with a straight edge just like on 
the possum skinner. Um, so you get a lot of utility out of this type of knife. And I do suggest if you want a Great Eastern Cutlery knife um, that will make a good user uh, for a relatively um, low price compared to other Great Eastern Cutlery knives, especially two blade Great Eastern Cutlery knives, I would recommend this Possum Skinner. Um, so check them out. Like I say, there's a couple different, different versions. This with the natural canvas micarta and um, the uh, Northfield with the uh, elderberry jig bone. And so just to uh, show it here, like I said, I'll test the edge. Um, this is the packing instructions from Gunstock Jack. Let's see how it does. Oh, this is the wrong so it's okay. I, I think that the edge is probably not super refined, but it certainly cuts. Um, I might, you know, run this on my uh, fine stone real quick and make it a little bit finer of an edge. Let's see how the main blade does. That one seems about the same, maybe even a little bit finer of an edge, um, but both cut well. So you can see that, you know, you can get this knife and sometimes people have complaints about gradation cutlery's uh, sharpening from the factory. And that's true compared to, uh, you know, if you're used to modern knives, um, they might not have the most fine edge but they're definitely working edges. And this is a knife in the Titty Hoot version um, that it can definitely be a true EDC uh, using knife and these edges will be fine. You can sharpen it when you need to and it'll sharpen easily and nicely. So that's my thoughts on this knife. I just got it. I am going to carry it and use it today. Uh, it's a nice knife. And again, it is the Great Eastern Cutlery Titty Hoot number 828218. Uh, possum skinner and natural canvas micart. So if you enjoy this video, please like it. You can leave any comments or questions. I always try to answer them and I'm interested to see what you have to say. Um, I've got lots of other videos, including videos on both of the knives that I showed in this video. Uh, so check those out and subscribe to my channel so you get notifications when I post other new videos. And don't forget to go out and do good.